Welcome. You finished the main course of your day. Now you're here for the dessert that is this all desserts game. Speaking of which, we asked people to share their favorite desserts. And as always, you did not disappoint. So let's see what we've got. Donna loves homemade banana pudding. Fantastic with the Nilla wafers in there. I, the fresh banana, so good. TT4775 loves pineapple upside down cake. It's a nice, good, moist cake. Everybody enjoys a good old pineapple upside down cake. What else do we have here? We've got the tier, as is Mustang Jenny39. Susan Sun is ordering the banana cream pie. A couple people with banana themed desserts. Love it. Cruise fan loves a hot fudge sundae. Master X and FSU Cat mentioned ice cream cake. Gotta love ice cream cake. Come on, ice cream cake is fantastic. That's like one from childhood. It's got like the, I like the little bits of cookie that are in it that like give it the texture. That's really, that's the good stuff for me. Sonia Net 93 wants a nice coffee cake. That feels like a family gathering. Somebody in my family would bring an Entenmann's coffee cake and we'd all get a little slice at the end of the day. So I associate that with family gatherings. Great choice. Sonia Net 93. Also, we've got Mecca's Vulcan 300 who asked if cookies count as a dessert. Let me tell you something. Mecca's Vulcan 300. Yes, they do. Of course. Of course, that's a dessert. In fact, I'm even willing to count the cookie dough that Dina M tossed out there. Cookie Now there's edible cookie dough. I mean, you can eat it raw. It's not really good for you, but you can also eat safe cookie dough. It's made just for you to eat that way. And that is a dessert too. And I guess you brought your sweet tooth with you, which is a good thing because this is, of course, an all-dessert edition of Swag Bucks Live, the mobile game show where you win money from the comfort of your phone. Let your mind run wild as you run through everything you've ever known about desserts as you go after today's grand prize. We're sneaking up on it because that's huge. It's $2,500, of course. And you know how you win a piece of it. That's right. Correctly answer these 10 multiple choice trivia questions about dessert, and you'll split it with anyone else who can do the same. Now, in this game, you will earn one bonus SB for every question you get right after question number one, even if you've already been eliminated. So if you get knocked out, don't go anywhere. Keep earning bonus SB. Keep getting questions right. However many you get right after question number one, you will earn a bonus SP for that. You will have to claim them at the end of the game in order to keep them in that case, okay? We don't want them to go away forever, so just click the button that appears at the very end of the game to claim the SP and add them to your account. If you are a grand prize winner, you will not have to claim anything. The bonuses you earn throughout are automatically rolled into your share of that $2,500 grand prize plus... For those of you who are newcomers, once per game, the first time you get a question wrong, as long as it's before question number 10, you have the opportunity to rejoin. Give yourself another shot at the grand prize. Now, you can do that using SB. It's generally one SB to rejoin a game. Or you can use a free rejoin if you have any. If you don't, after the game, try clicking the Get More Rejoins button. That'll help you out. And next time we have a second chance week, you'll be able to earn free rejoins just for playing the game. Right? Sounds great. But in that, for now, we're going to clean the plate of all these comments. There they go. So we can get to the good stuff. The start of the game. Here it is right now. Here is question number one. What is the base ingredient in a sundae? Is it waffles, ice cream, or turkey? Looking for the chief base ingredient in a sundae. A couple people said they loved sundaes in the comments before. Created on a whim by a Unitarian minister, it's now a staple dessert with countless toppings and baked goods to customize it. But always, you got to start with that ice cream base. Ice cream, of course, is the answer. Ice cream, you scream. We all know the answer is ice cream. 94% of you getting that one right. Well done. 6% going with waffles, which is not the base of a sundae, but a great addition, I might add. And for those of you who were eliminated, a little over 6% of you, looks like everybody's coming back in. Plus some of our stragglers, we have over 31,500 people in grand prize contention, almost 32,400 of you playing in total. 
good news is, don't go anywhere. This game moves fast as lightning, and you're about to earn one bonus SB for every question you get right. So why would you leave? You wouldn't. Let's move on to question number two, worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Wendy's recently released what flavor of Frosty? Is it strawberry, bread, or liver and onions? Wendy's recently released what flavor of Frosty? Have you had it yet? Truly, a small French fry and a chocolate Frosty is a Hall of Fame dessert. The saltiness and that chocolate flavor mix perfectly together. And now, if you want something a little different, you can try it in strawberry. Strawberry is the answer. 97% of you getting that one right. I've had the strawberry Frosty uh, one or two occasions, and I like it. It's actually, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I think I still prefer the chocolate. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. In the meantime, I got to move on to question number three right now. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here is Q3. What type of chip is commonly used in cookies? Is it cinnamon, potato, or chocolate? Very common. Maybe the most famous of cookies at this point uses this type of chip. Put whatever you want in a cookie, though. We cannot thank Ruth Wakefield and the Toll House Inn for changing the game with an invention of pure magic enough. They gave us the chocolate chip cookie. Chocolate is the type of chip we were looking for. 98% of you getting that one right. Well done. I like to see about 30,000 people in grand prize contention at this point because this is our hardest game of the week. It's Thursday. It's a challenge. But stick with it because good things happen when you stick with the game. Let's move on to question number four right now. It is worth one bonus SB to anybody who gets it right. Here is Q4. What dessert food was once an ingredient in a 19th century remedy for sore throats? Is it marshmallows, caramel corn, or shaved ice? Which was used to treat a sore throat? Now, it may not have been so effective at curing or soothing a sore throat, but you can put it on a stick and toast it over an open fire. That is a much better use of those marshmallows anyway. Marshmallows is the answer. 77% of you getting that one right well done. 23% of you unfortunately eliminated, but that does give you two options. One is to rejoin and give yourself another crack at that $2,500 grand prize. The other is to stick around, keep earning bonus SB, and claim them at the end. The third option, which is just leaving, is bad because you're leaving money on the table. I bet you already have a couple bonus SB. Why would you leave those? You don't. I, you, you can still earn the bonus SB if you don't rejoin. Think Just, just in case that's not clear. All right. Here we go. We are moving on. Question number five on the way. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. What MLB player once traded a small percentage of his signing bonus in exchange for 50 cents to buy chocolate milk? Was it Mike Trout, Justin Verlander, or Bryce Harper? This is like pro sports lore. Maybe you've read this story before. In the 10th grade, Daniel Hicks, Daniel Hicks lent his buddy a couple of quarters in exchange for 0.01% of their future signing bonus. That net, that deal netted him over $3,000 when Justin Verlander signed his first deal. Boy, was that a good trade. 50 cents for three grand and chocolate milk for Justin Verlander? Come on, 78% of you getting that one right. Well done. 13% going with Bryce Harper, which I can understand. I certainly favor the Philadelphians around here. And Mike Trout, another person from Philadelphia, or New Jersey actually, even though he plays out here in Anaheim, but neither of those are correct. It was Justin Verlander who had to have that chocolate milk, and boy, I I'm telling you, what a great deal that was. I'm happy to see only 22% of you were eliminated, about half of those people coming right back in. Still almost 25,000 people in grand prize contention. We are halfway done this game. That's how fast it goes. Question number six is on its way right now. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here is Q6. Which of the following is a sandwich cookie? Is it Chessmen, E.L. Fudge, or Oreo? Somebody was asking, are cookies dessert? Well, here's a question about cookies in an all-dessert game. That should answer your question. And it's not just a sandwich cookie. It is the sandwich cookie, even though it's younger than its competitor, Hydrox. I'm talking about Oreo, of course. Oreo is the answer. 95% of you getting that one right, the E.L. Fudge. Uh, is just dipped in fudge, is not a sandwich. And the chessmen, it's a butter cookie. It's in a rectangular shape with a with a chess piece stamped on the front of it, or baked into the front of it. It's risen up, kind of stamped in there. You get what I'm saying. 
95% of you at least did. Well done to you. I'd say we can move on now to question number seven. Only four questions remaining. This next one worth one bonus SB to any of the 32,000 plus of you who get it right. Here is question number seven. What dessert was invented by a carpenter? Is it Jello, taffy, or fudge? One of these three desserts was invented by a carpenter. Do you know which one it is? Do you know this dessert lore? Back in 1897, Pearl Waite was trying to invent a cough remedy, laxative tea, in his home, which seems like an odd combination, and it is, but his experiments with gelatin led to the invention of a little thing called J-E-L-L-O. Jello is the answer, and 80% of you getting that one right. You all know. You know your desserts here. This is a Thursday game, and we still have over 20,000 people in grand prize contention. You are crushing all of these difficult questions. The rest of you are sticking around, which I love to see. You're not leaving those bonus SB that you've been earning and will continue to earn through this game on the table and saying goodbye to them forever because he got a little frustrated. He says, we're having fun here. We want you to win, and we want you to get these SB, and the only way you can do that is to stick around. So let's move on to question number eight right now. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here is Q8. Which restaurant popularized the baked Alaska? Was it the Brown Derby, Delmonico's, or Commander's Palace? Got one in Los Angeles, one in New York, and one in New Orleans. Only one of them popularized the baked Alaska. The dish was named to celebrate America's 19th century annexation of Alaska, which would eventually become a state, and it first took off at Delmonico's in New York. Delmonico's is the answer. 90% of you getting that one right. And guess what? That was the most difficult question that I had left for you. And 90% of you get it right. I can't, I'm beaming. You can't, you can hear it in my voice, can't you? How I'm beaming, how excited I am for you, how great this is for the game. The finest game that's ever been played, by the way, Swagbucks Live. I don't think I'm using hyperbole there. All right, let's move on, shall we? Let's move on to question number nine. Worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. What company makes the Twinkie? Is it Little Debbie, Tasty Cake, or Hostess? Who makes the Twinkie, I ask you? Wonder if you'll know this one. Could you possibly know? Now, Twinkies last a long time, but it's not the only delicious treat made by the correct answer to this question. I would say all of Hostess's baked goods are top of the line. Hostess is the answer. 17,639 of you have made it this far, and you are ready for our final question. But before that final question, you know, you're all doing so great in this game, and I know you love games. So, hey, why not experience your online bingo game as you never have before? Well, go, is this, are, can you see it? You can't see it, can you? Can you see it? Is it showing up? Let's see. There it is. I don't know why it wasn't showing up, but there it is for you. Anyway, why not experience your online bingo game as you never have before while going on a bingo games adventure in Bingo Blitz for iOS or Android? Install the app and get 50 SB. But then, if you reach level 70 within seven days, you will earn another 4,000 SB. So you have to be a U.S. player to take advantage of this opportunity, but please learn more about it after this game. If you haven't already downloaded and tried, tried Bingo Blitz, now is the time to do it. Again, 50 SB just for installing it on your iOS or Android device if, device if you haven't done so before. And then reach level 70 in seven days. And you'll thousand SB. That's $40 in PayPal cash or free gift cards. That is a heck of a deal as we say in the biz. We have 18,272 people vying for a piece of our $2,500 grand prize. Almost 32,000 of you have stuck with us till the very end. And we got another bonus SB as your dessert in this game about desserts. It is question number 10. Here it is. Which of the following desserts is traditionally flambéed tableside? Is it ladyfingers, cherries jubilee, or lemon meringue pie? Which of these do they set on fire in front of you while you're sitting at your table? It's always been special when a dish can be both a dessert and a show. And that's what happens when the brandy is flambéed off of a Cherry's Jubilee. Cherry's Jubilee is the answer. 17,251 of you knew that answer. And you are splitting our grand prize. Well done to each and every one of you. Taking home 15 SP.